Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about Flexbox ordering, which is a way to actually move the order of your DOM elements without actually moving them in your DOM, which is kind of cool. Uh, so I want to start just from scratch so we make sure that we're uh, still comfortable with setting up Flexbox from scratch. So if we look back again, make sure that um, I've got this container, which is our Flex container, and then I've got a whole bunch of boxes inside of it, which are called our Flex items. So the way that we do that is we select the container, Let's go ahead and say dot container display flex and give it a save. And now when I refresh, you'll notice that all of the items are just smushed together. Then we'll go ahead and select each box. Each box has a class of box on it. And um, I'm just going to say flex one. And we haven't done that just yet. That's in a future video. But essentially what that will do is uh, it will just evenly, it'll take all the width that we have here and it will evenly distribute it amongst each other. We're going to learn a lot more about uh, this flex property and, and all the different arguments that we can give it. Uh, but for now, just know that the flex one distributes it equally. Why am I doing that? Just so that this demo looks pretty nice without it. It kind of like gets squished together and uh, I don't want to have to get into any more uh, width tricks than I have to. I want to keep these demos as simple as possible. So uh, we got flex one on there, but let's go ahead um, and talk about the order uh, property. So the order property, if you go ahead and select like box three, it's just order. So for whatever reason, it's not flex order like everything else we've done so far is flex dash something. It's simply just order uh, and order will take a number. There's no pixels or uh, anything like that. And if you give it an order, let's say if I give it just five, give it a save and refresh, you'll notice that we took box three, which is this purple one, and it's moved all the way on to the end. So what did we learn from that? Well, if we give it an order of five, uh, first of all, what is one through four? And uh, let's take a look. What if we just do order one and refresh? Nothing actually happens. So that's interesting. The default order for everything where it is not set is zero. So by default, everything is set to order zero and you'll see that it's one, two, three, three just gets set in there. So when you go ahead and set anything to anything greater than zero, like one, it will then go ahead and put it on the end. So it's zero, 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 all the way to the end. These are all zero and one starts there. So similarly, if we go to box seven, say order two, it's going to give us all of these one through 10, these boxes right here. And then we've got three and seven in the order there. So um, if you really wanted to, if this is kind of throwing you off, you could just say everything is order one. Now everything goes on ahead and box three, you could say order three. Now we've got everything is one, then box three which is the purple one is, is three and seven is two. So they go in that order. Um, so that's really helpful if you're, especially working on like a responsive design. Uh, a lot of times I'll get website designs from designers and they'll say, uh, this is great. And then when it gets to mobile, let's just totally change how everything looks. And you say like, well, I can't really do that because uh, the way that the HTML is written is kind of the order that it shows up. We've got a few tricks we could do positioning or floating things left and right. But if you want to totally change the order, like if you want to take this, uh, this number three and just take it all the way out and maybe put it in the footer of a website, then you, you don't really have an option until now that we have Flexbox and that's when you can use order. Uh, what happens if we make something negative, negative, let's try box three, order negative one, give it a save. What you'll see is it, it also does work negatively. If I make box seven, negative two, it's going to negative two, negative one. The rest of them are one because I put it here. Or if I take this off, the rest of them are zero on. So it works kind of like Z index. There's no units. It just kind of figures out what order everything is in and we'll stick them in. Um, the really one caveat that we have here, if I just make this order one, is that if I try and use my selector here, so I'm just selecting one, selecting two, and then I'm going to try to select four. Look what happens where I, I hover over four and one, two, and then three is selected with my thing. If I keep going a little bit further, it's going to select four. Uh, let's get one, one more out of there. So box five, 
order two, that should put it right at the end there. So one, two, three is now selected. One, two, three, four, five. So like if you're trying to like actually like copy some text off of it, like let's say I wanted to copy one, four, two, and one, and then I went into here and pasted it, I actually get one, two, three, and four. So uh, it's not to be used for things where you need people to copy text because that's going to make them really frustrated. But generally, that's not what you're doing. You're not like ordering paragraph tags. You probably have like a layout item where this might be header, footer, about, contact, uh, products, where you're just kind of changing the order at which they come in. So that's order. Uh, we will see you in the next video where we're going to talk about uh, alignment. And that's some of the, I think that's what a lot of people are here to learn where you've got all these boxes. How do you have a little bit more fine grained control over aligning uh, and centering and justifying content of all the items? So see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.